Hi, my name is Vic and I work as a dietitian in the community respiratory team. Nutrition plays a vital role in our breathing and respiratory system. Both undernutrition and overnutrition can impact how quickly you recover from infections, the amount of exacerbations you have, and how efficient your day to day breathing is. In this video, I will be talking to you about the dietary changes you can make to help manage and take better control of your respiratory diagnosis. When you are overweight, the body needs to use more energy to move, breathe, and complete daily tasks. This extra energy should be used in building and maintaining a healthy immune system. However, your resources are used up elsewhere, which means being overweight can leave your body's defences weaker. Carrying excess weight can also make you fatigue more quickly. This heightens the challenges of daily activities. Alternatively, being underweight can make you feel more tired because the body is not receiving enough energy from nutrition. This can then make your breathing muscles weaker, which therefore makes it harder to breathe. If you are underweight, you have a higher risk of getting respiratory infections, which are a common cause of COPD flare-ups and exacerbations. Undernutrition also increases the chances of anxiety, depression and self-neglect. So get in the habit of weighing yourself regularly. The scale will alert you to any weight loss or gain. You should see your doctor or dietitian if you continue to lose weight or if you gain weight whilst following the recommended diet. So why is eating a healthy diet important for COPD patients? Well, whether you are overweight, underweight, or even a healthy weight, a healthy balanced diet is important for a respiratory diagnosis. Food contains nutrients that give you energy, which the body needs to work properly. Having a diagnosis of COPD means that you use up 10 times more energy to breathe than people with healthy lungs do. For this reason, it is especially important for you to follow a diet that provides your body with enough of the right kinds of nutrients. Examples of a healthy balanced diet include having a wide range of fruit and vegetables. You should aim for five a day and go for different varieties and colors, so taste in the rainbow. Choose complex carbohydrates such as whole grain breads, pasta and rice, fresh fruits and vegetables, as well as the, as the likes of oats and whole grain cereals. All of these foods also contain a high amount of fiber. Aim to include protein at least twice a day to maintain those strong respiratory muscles. Good choices here include milk, eggs, cheese, meat, fish, poultry, nuts, and beans and pulses. Also opting for healthier unsaturated fats such as olive or rapeseed oils, nuts, and avocados. Drinking enough of the right kinds of fluids. So aim for six to eight glasses a day, but remember this does not include drinks that contain caffeine or alcohol. Drinking enough fluids every day can make the mucus thinner and therefore make this easier to clear from your lungs. But please note, these are general nutritional guidelines for people living with COPD. Each person's needs are different. So moving on to vitamins and minerals. Many people find taking a general purpose multivitamin helpful if you struggle to get a good range of nutrients from diet alone. Also, a lot of people diagnosed with COPD are prescribed steroids. If this is you, long-term use of steroids may increase your need for calcium. So you should consider taking calcium supplements and also looking for one that includes vitamin D as well. But before adding any vitamins to your daily routine, be sure to discuss this with your doctor and your pharmacist. So an exacerbation of COPD is when your symptoms get much worse very quickly. It may even be more difficult to get enough nutrients during an exacerbation. You may also lose weight during this time. So here are a few things that you can do to help. So number one is eating small meals throughout the day. You may be able to eat more healthy foods if you try and aim for five to six small meals a day rather than three large ones. This will prevent you from getting full too quickly and feeling full after meals can also lead to shortness of breath. So make sure you eat slowly and chew your food well. Also choosing soft foods that are easy to chew can help. So examples of these include soups, scrambled eggs, pasta, pudding, 
cooked fruit and vegetables, yogurts and fish. And also finally, drinking more liquid as able. As I mentioned before, liquid will keep your mucus thin and easier to cough up. Mucus that stays in your lungs makes it harder to breathe when an exacerbation starts. Liquids with extra calories can also help prevent weight loss during an exacerbation. So examples of these include high calorie milkshakes made with whole milk or added milk powder. If you think that you'd benefit from dietetic input because you need to lose or gain weight, your appetite is poor, or you're struggling to maintain a healthy weight, then speak to your doctor or a respiratory specialist. If it is deemed appropriate, they can look at referring you to a dietitian for dietary support.